Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance from he who is, and who was, and who is to come. Amen. Your fellow believers in Christ, during Holy Week, we Christians praise the great deeds of God. The greatest deeds of God. The great acts of God that won our salvation for us happened during these seven days. Holy Week. The board was set. The pieces were in place. The time had fully come. And during these seven days, every detail, every aspect, every facet of God's plan of salvation roared into a laser-like focus. On Jerusalem. The seven days of Holy Week. And it starts today with Palm Sunday. The day when our Lord entered into Jerusalem as a king. That, by the way, is what makes Palm Sunday so important. Jesus had been to Jerusalem before plenty of times in his life, but today he goes to Jerusalem as a the king. Zion, Melaka, La, Bo. Zion, your king comes to you riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Today that comes true. All the desires of the Old Testament believers, the king, the Messiah, enters Jerusalem. And I tell you this morning, watch him as he goes. Look at him closely. For in him alone is strength and deliverance. There is no other God. There is no other salvation. There is no other saving. In him alone is strength and deliverance. Now our text this morning is Isaiah chapter 45. It's four short verses of prophecy in the book of Isaiah. But the reason it's our text today on Palm Sunday is because these verses, they reverberate directly with our gospel lesson, where Jesus enters Jerusalem. There's a direct connection going on here. And you see him as he goes by. The king riding on a donkey. He goes down from the Mount of Olives and then he begins to ascend to the Temple Mount. And the crowds are going wild. They are screaming, Hosanna, Hosanna. But he is silent. He does no miracles now. His hand rests. He is silent. You notice on Palm Sunday, our Lord doesn't speak while he's riding into Jerusalem. In fact, he doesn't speak until at the end of the gospel lesson, the Pharisees come to him and say, rebuke your disciples. And he says, I tell you, the stones will cry out. Other than that, he doesn't speak. Because he doesn't need to. He already did. He already told us exactly what was happening in Isaiah chapter 45 verse 22 turn to me and be saved all you ends of the earth for I am God and there is no other turn to me and be saved all you ends of the earth what's interesting here brothers and sisters is that when Isaiah prophesied this this is in the middle of a book where God has spent a lot of chapters, a lot of time, taking the nations one by one and smacking down their gods. He actually does that in the book of Isaiah. He takes the nations one by one. Egypt, your gods are worthless. Midian, worthless. Moab, worthless. Assyria, worthless. He takes each and every one of them. He upbraids the nations for their worthless gods and then here. He turns around and says, look to me and be saved, 
all you ends of the earth. And in your mind's eye, you see him as he rides by. As he rides on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In him alone, to him, let the nations look to him and be saved. All the ends of the earth. And as he rides by, he does no miracles today. His hand rests. He is silent. He doesn't speak. Because he doesn't need to. He already did. Isaiah 45, verse 23. By myself I have sworn. My mouth has uttered in all integrity a word that will not be revoked. Before me every knee will bow. By me every tongue will swear. They will say of me in the Lord alone our righteousness and strength. Well, that's pretty clear right there that our God is saying there is no one else. There is no other salvation. There is no other God in him alone. And that phrase in the middle of verse 23, in your Bibles it reads, my mouth has uttered a word in all integrity that will not be revoked. That's actually not a great translation. In the Hebrew, what God says is, a word of righteousness has gone forth from my mouth and it will not be revoked. A word of righteousness has gone forth from my mouth. And what God is talking about, the word of righteousness, is the plan of salvation. That's what God is saying in verse 23. The word of righteousness, the plan of salvation that I promised already in Genesis 3, it has gone forth. The plan to make the nations righteous. And it will not be revoked. It is going to be completed. It is going to be fulfilled. I am going to do it. And you see him as he rides by. The crowds are shouting Hosanna. He is silent. Because he goes to fulfill. He goes to fulfill the word of righteousness that has gone forth from the mouth of the Lord. In him alone is strength and deliverance. And now he's going to show everybody just how true that statement is. In him alone, strength and deliverance. Which is kind of the problem for most. For most people, that is the problem with Jesus Christ, that he would dare to claim that in him alone is salvation. That he would dare to be so exclusive as to say that in him alone is strength and saving. There's nobody else. That was the problem with Israel at Isaiah's time. That was the exact problem. They wanted to look for their strength and their salvation in other places. So they went to the Baals. Then they went to Asherah. They kept going in the wrong spots. And it was the same problem 700 years later with Jerusalem. The people who were there when Jesus rode in on Palm Sunday. You know how that week ends. The people who shouted Hosanna today in seven days are going to shout crucify him. Because they rejected him as the one true Messiah. As the only one who can save. It's the same problem for many today. We live in a society that says, everyone, all things are equal. All religions are equally valid. All paths to God are equally true. Well, God's being pretty obvious right here in these verses that no, that's not true. In him alone is strength and deliverance. But that's a big problem for many. And even us, sometimes. 
Because of our sinful hearts, it is so easy for us to be tempted to look for strength, indeed to look for anything good in any other spot but Him. It is so easy for us to boast of something else other than Him. I mean, can anyone here honestly tell me that every single time you've boasted in your life, you've always boasted of the Lord? None of us could possibly say that. And make no mistake, brothers and sisters, what you boast in, that's where you think strength is. That's where you think good things are. It is the problem that Jesus Christ would dare to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And yet, dear friends, praise be to our God because in Him alone is righteousness and strength and deliverance and salvation. Praise be to God because we never could have done it. We never, ever, ever could have possibly saved ourselves. And today, Jesus ascends to Jerusalem to complete that, to show us how true that statement is, that in Him alone is strength and deliverance. For now, in Holy Week, the final moves of our salvation, the final checkmate against Satan, sin, and death is what he's going to do. Dying on a cross, that's the final checkmate. Our Savior willingly giving up his life he went into Jerusalem as a king and he is dragged out of Jerusalem on Good Friday as a criminal. And as he is killed, our Savior takes a bath, willingly took a bath in all of our sinful guilt till he was awash with our sins. He swallowed all of them down to the dregs, completely took our guilt upon himself, and then he died. Then he gave up his life. So that your sins could be completely and utterly obliterated in the sight of God. So that they could be totally crushed under Christ's perfect righteousness. Make no mistake, brothers and sisters, your verdict of not guilty rests upon the fact that your king went to Jerusalem and gave up his life for you thereby fulfilling in total clarity the statement that in Him alone is strength and deliverance, righteousness and salvation. And watch Him. Watch Him as He goes by. During Holy Week, we praise the great deeds of God, the greatest acts of our God that saved us. And watch him closely as he gives up his life on Good Friday. Watch him as he rises from the empty tomb, defeating our enemy for us. Watch him closely, because in him alone is strength and deliverance and righteousness and salvation. There is no other God. There is no other Savior. It is only him. Amen.